Greetings from the People's Action for Learning Network and welcome to the first of many monthly spotlights on our members. So thank you very much. Mama Zaida, I will begin with a greetings from PAL Network and introduce the monthly spotlight. And mm -hmm. then I'll try my best to introduce you to the potential audience on YouTube and uh, Facebook, okay. um, and then we'll get on with the questions. Is that all right? That is fine. Thank you, Mama Zaida. Welcome to the first of many monthly spotlights on the network's members and their works. PAL Network is a South to South partnership of 15 organizations from 14 countries across Asia, Africa, and the Americas. As a network, we are guided by a vision of a world where all children have a foundational for found lifelong learning. Our members are leaders and pioneers of Asar Uezo like citizen led assessments and action programs that support children's foundational literacy and numeracy. Our household based assessments have put a spotlight on the global learning crisis that is around us, which is that a large proportion of children, especially from rural parts of the global south, are unable to do basic math and reading despite multiple years of schooling. This learning crisis has further deepened due to the COVID-related school closures and other school disruptions. So I think this is a good time to understand the challenges we face in enabling foundational literacy and numeracy for all children. For this purpose, it is my pleasure to introduce to all of you our very special guest this afternoon, Zaida Mgela, who is the Executive Director of Uezo Tanzania. Mama Zaida, welcome to the first spotlight. How are you? I'm very fine, Raj. Thank you very much. I'm Thank so you. excited to be in this session for yes. the first time uh, for the PAL network. And yes. I believe we are going to have a wonderful talk, uh, which will be very useful to our listeners and the education practitioners and the PAL network members as well. Thank you very much. A quick introduction to Mama Zaida. She has had a decade long experience of teaching children prior to her involvement in international NGOs working towards equitable and inclusive education. Her work includes senior roles in Uezo Tanzania, SNV and Tanesa. She's also a writer and has authored a number of case studies, publications in local media, international peer reviewed journals and working papers. She holds a master's degree in education from Murdoch University, Australia. And interestingly enough, she believes in the quote that education is power. And with that, we welcome Mama Zaida to the first monthly spotlight of PAL Network. So Mama Zaida, let's start off with, if you had to introduce Uezo in yeah. like 20 seconds, how would you do it? Okay, um, Uezo Tanzania is currently a newly registered independent non-government organization. And we are registered under NGO Act of 2000 in Tanzania. Uh, but Uwezo, for those who are hearing about Uwezo for the first time, Uwezo me means capability in Kiswahili. And this is the initiative which was introduced uh, by Twaweza East Africa far back in 2009 in Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. And it was only in 2019 where Tuaweza reached a decision to spin off Uwezo in the three countries and have it registered as independent entity. And that's where uh, Uwezo Tanzania was legally registered in January 2020. Thank you for that, Mama Zaida. Uh, in terms of history, what encouraged or enthused uh, the initial formation of 
what encouraged the entire uezo team to come together to learn oh. together and to get involved in this citizen led assessment um there's a very uh, good history for the initiation of uezo in east africa and this started far back in 2008 and we had a team of experts from east africa uh, who visited india pratam and fortunately they were able to learn from pratam organization how they were conducting a citizen led assessment they decided to start a similar initiative in east africa and they named it uwezo which uh, I, i have introduced at the beginning and they decided to start a uh, uwezo initiative in kenya in 2009 and in 2010 uwezo was established in tanzania and and uganda so that's where uh, uwezo was initiated but also the initiative of involving citizen to find solutions how do you involve people to find solution when they don't understand the problem so the idea of citizen engagement in the learning assessment was key to involve citizen right at the beginning to understand the learning crisis so that when they are involved in the discussion in the debate to find the solution to improve the learning outcomes they they are aware about the magnitude of the problem so if i understand correctly prior to the citizen led assessments a lot of focus of education sector development was on input based programming right yes it was yes. about how to get to children to school how to build more schools how yeah. to build toilets how to yes. build classrooms so on and so forth right yeah. Yeah. when you did uezo for the first time like mm. what is that one experience that you remember from your uezo days Yeah um when i was involved for the first time in the uezo assessment i was shocked to see that there are some children who were in class 4 class 5 class 6 they were not able to 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 read a simple story in kiswahili but also they were not able to do simple arith- numeracy operations uh, like up to subtraction level or multiplication level but another thing which struck me was um the reaction from the parents because uwezo is very unique it is implemented in the at the household so we don't conduct assessment at the school but we do it at the household and you i was surprised to see some parents who were shocked to see that their children were not able to read when they are already in class 6 or they are already in class 7 so i realized that their parents who are not monitoring the learning of their children and conducting the assessment at the household was really appropriate because it engaged the parents uh, mm-hmm. to get the instant feedback on the learning ability of the child and from there it triggers their response on how they can move forward to support the child and connect with the teachers at school to know what is going on so, mm-hmm. Yeah. So essentially schooling years did not translate into learning years. Yes. Yeah. And uh, taking cue from what you said it is a very interesting point that engaging citizens as surveyors to do the assessment how did that impact the way uezo was spread like um you know such an important tool across uh, the ESA region and elsewhere. what we do is to ensure that children sorry citizens are involved at every stage for example we involve them in pre-testing the assessment tools in piloting the assessment tools and then in the full um, process of conducting the learning assessment at the household so the citizen volunteers becomes the ambassador uh, to talk about this uh, assessment which has been simplified that any citizen can do it this is simply to sit down with a child and ask the child to read the text and you can tell whether the child can read or cannot read so it's a very realistic kind of assessment and that's why um it 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 got that attraction and um people were curious really to be engaged and and spread 
the, 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 the kind of assessment which can capture the learning ability of a child in a very short moment, but really in a realistic way. The simplicity of the test that yeah. citizens can carry forward has yeah. been one of the most powerful factors for OESO and ASAR like uh, yeah. assessment. Uh, why do you think these multiple surveys across the years were so important? Like first time you did OESO, second time you did OESO. What truth or what value did that bring to the education circle and assessment of learning? Um, it was really important to repeat the assessment, conduct robust data on the learning outcomes, and maintain the consistency in order to track the progress and inform, engage the policymakers, engage the government officials to look at the trend of performance of the children. Are there any improvement? Because uh, when we we, 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 we launched our first report in 20, a full district uh, report in Tanzania in 2011, it, it, the government did, was like, no, 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 this is not true. They didn't believe us immediately. And so when we repeated and we involved them in the development of the tools, we worked together very closely with the curriculum unit so that they give their technical expertise to develop the test, which are benchmarked at the curriculum of grade two level. We invite them to go to the field, even to observe how children are tested. And when we repeated the assessment for the second, third, fourth, fifth, we were able to track the progress and where there were no changes, it was clearly seen. And we could draw those lines showing whether the performance is dropping, or the performance has improved. For example, in the Kiswahili subject or in, in the Kiswahili reading test, we saw that uh, the trend has uh, gone up from 2011 to 2017. For example, in 2011, uh, the performance of grade three children in Kiswahili was 29%, and it kept on increasing to 30 something, 45. And in 2017, the pass rate of grade three children in Kiswahili was around 62%. So we, this kind of information, it tells the citizens and the government how we are progressing in the education. And also um, it's, it's a kind of alarm on whether we are achieving uh, the SDGs. Yeah. Uh, Mama Zaida, connecting to this question of being on track, so how has the UESO assessments affected not only government education systems, but also other civil society actors? Yeah, um, UESO assessment findings have been a very useful kind of tool to trigger the response from various actors, from the government, and the civil society organization as well. From the government, we see uh, them revisiting the education policy, putting more emphasis on teaching of the three hours. But Tanzania also in 2015, they revised the curriculum for grade one and two to only focus on the teaching of the reading, writing, and arithmetic. And for the civil society organization, we have uh, seen several of them approaching UESO to build their capacity to use our tool to assess children uh, in their project area where they're implementing their activities. And we have done that uh, for several organizations. But also we see that um, the big, big international NGOs uh, who are coming in and donors as well to support uh, education system in Tanzania, they use UESO data as baseline information to justify the requirement to support education program that focus on improving foundational uh, literacy and numeracy skills. So, we are contributing that way. And we have some organization 
which are partners for Uwezo Tanzania because we are conducting the learning assessments. Uh, when we have enough funds, we conduct in all the districts in the country and we are a very small secretariat team. We can't go everywhere. So we partner with our uh, other local NGOs. So we train them and they also participate in conducting the assessment. But thereafter, they also take over the results to share and disseminate in their local areas to create debates in uh, discussing the quality of education provided to the children, but also involving citizens and local leaders to develop some actions and improve the learning outcome in their area. So when you were doing these UESOs, do you have one story you remember? Like, uh, let's say you went to assess a child, uh, he, she or he said something that you still remember. Do you have any uh, such anecdote? That <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to a household and we, I, was, I was supervising the volunteers when they were assessing the kid in the household. And when we finished assessing the child, I remember it was a, a boy and he said, um, can you also assess my mom? <laughs> <laughs> so did you assess the mom? <laughs> so we asked her, would you like to take the test? And she said, yes. We gave the lady the test and she tried to read. Yeah, and we just um, used our diplomatic way of ending the test so that we don't embarrass her in front of the child. But it was really interesting for the kid to say, okay, you've tested me. Now can you test my mom? <laughs> I think this also brings us to a very crucial point of our assessment is that yeah. they're extremely child-friendly. So I yeah. have, you know, we have seen children enjoy, like typically they would run away from exams. Uh -huh. Uezo participation and Asar participation, right? Yeah. Recently, became an independent NGO. Uh, and how has that transformation been for you as an organization and for you as a PAN leader? I believe that any transition uh, has um, its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, for us, we were a department within Tuaweza East Africa and the good thing, even within Tuaweza Uwezo, we were like standing on our own. And even out there, we were recognized as Uwezo. And even the assessment was Uwezo assessment, not Tuaweza assessment. Mm -hmm. So that gave us a credibility because we were already uh, exposed nationally and globally. Even when we, we do our presentation in various conferences, um, Internationally, uh, we are recognized as Uwezo East Africa, Uwezo Tanzania, Uwezo Uganda, Uwezo Kenya. The transition um, started in 2019 and we moved very fast because we already existed and we were already familiar with the task that we, 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 are, we are going to do even when we are independent. And maybe we are going to add some other new things, but we already um, build the institutional kind of memory of, of the key activities that Uwezo was established to do. So now we have to engage and create the new donors to support our organization. We are very thankful that we have some donors who supported us in the past, who also continued and agreed to support us for the coming, uh, for the for three years. Yeah. Uh, Mama Zaida, thank you for sharing that so candidly. We hope that this interview in some degree, some degree might help you in that endeavor. Moving forward, uh, when you are now an independent organization and you are continuing to look at foundational learning, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, your experiences with PAL Networks, ICANN Project, or other projects, or even involvement in Rally, and what you are doing in the action space currently? Uh, we have been working uh, very closely to share 
our data uh, with PAL network for comparative purposes, because within PAL we have a very strong department on data management and analysis who uh, work closely with us in various countries to, 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 to collect the data that we generate from our citizen-led assessment. They curate it and they are able to produce um, some write-ups which can compare the performance of our children in different countries. And we have been working with PAL Network um, in designing and developing new tools for assessing uh, numeracy skills. And that's, why, that's where we came up with this uh, ICANN tool. And Uwezo Tanzania uh, participated fully to pilot the tools and also conduct the pilot assessment in Arusha district. So for us, that was really great. We were part of the world to develop this common tool and pilot it and tell the people that it works. We can have a tool which uh, is in line with our own context. Uh, Mama Zaida, moving on to Jifunze, uh, mm. you tell us a little bit more about Jifunze. All right, so we have been conducting the learning assessment for so many years and people reached a point of asking, so what? Mm. Yes, they are not learning, so what? Mm. And from that juncture, we, we started brainstorming and think hard, what can we do to demonstrate to the government, to the citizens and other actors on what works to improve the learning outcomes. Uh, we, we worked very hard to contextualize the teaching at the right level, and we even named it Jifunze in our language, in Kiswahili means learning uh, initiative. And, and we are implementing it in 30 primary schools in six districts. And we are focusing uh, at children who are in grade three up to six, because we want to address those children who are lagging behind. So we conduct the normal Uwezo literacy and numeracy assessment to these children in order to identify those who are struggling with reading and numeracy. And thereafter, we conduct um, learning camps you know, we have already trained the teachers on how to do TAL, Jifunze, and then we, we, we work very closely with the school leadership for the teachers to get time and space to sit with the children in spe special classes. And they conduct the Jifunze learning camps for 30 days. And we monitor the, 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 the Jifunze uh, learning camps in 10 days interval. So once we have the baseline, the children start the learning uh, camp. After 10 days, we assess. We support teachers to assess the children. We identify those who have improved and regroup them to move to another group until they finish 30 days where we conduct the end line. And we, we check on how many children who were not able to read or do simple arithmetic who have improved after 30 days. Last year, we, we had a national convening of the rally uh, members and we invited our government officials and Uwezo Tanzania, we had uh, an opportunity to present the, 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 the Jifunze initiative, how we do it, where we do it and what are the results. And the government officials were very excited and they actually invited us through Rally Tanzania to, 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 to meet with them and discuss how this good intervention can be scaled up to reach many children. How do teachers, especially in-service teachers, view TARL as a means of engaging children's learning? Like, What is their take on it? Okay. Um, first of all, I observed that teacher motivation 
it's not always based on monetary mm. terms. Yes. I realized, and we realized that teachers were so motivated to, 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 to conduct the Jifunze learning uh, classes and support their children simply because of the quick gain, the results. They get the result very fast, and that makes them very proud that now they are experts compared mm -hmm. to other teachers. So those few teachers who are involved in the Jifunze, they are so proud of themselves that now they are the expert, and even within the school, they are respected. And the head teachers of the schools, they consult them and request them to train other teachers to understand TAL so that they can use the approach to improve teaching in their classroom. So for them, they, they see like this teaching at the right level has come to the right moment to help them identify the children who need very close support and support them. Yeah. What are your plans for scaling up Jifunzi? Um, our plans, uh, one is to, to engage with the government and really um, trigger their uh, interest to, to find a way of adopting Jifunze in the public schools, but also uh, we are we have uh, contact with the teacher training colleges to see uh, how they can adapt Jifunze in the pre-service teacher training. For the teachers who are in school, um, we need to find a way uh, where the government can also chip in and support to train the in-service teachers to adapt TAL. And we have like two districts where the, the government officials, they already incorporated TAL in their budget and they have conducted some workshops using the teachers who were trained by Uwezo Tanzania. They are using them now to train other teachers within their district so that they scale up the Jifunze in their area. Thank you for that, Mama Zaida. Before we close this session, one last message from you to all the listeners uh, about uh, what motivates you day in, day out, and if you have a memorable quote that you want to share with us. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I just want to say I'm very passionate in, in education. Myself, I was trained as a teacher and I, 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 I was a teacher in secondary school for more than 10 years before I left and joined the NGO sector. But even within the NGO sector, I maintained my passion and I've been working in the education programs throughout my my presence in the NGO sector for more than 25 years. I've been working on programs that would touch children, young people, and education. And for the message, I would like to quote Malcolm X, uh, who says, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepared for it today. So we have to prepare our children today Mm -hmm. to have this passport for the future, mm -hmm. for their development, for their well-being, so that they, we have citizens who are well-educated and who can thrive and excel in various angles of life. Thanks for such an insightful conversation. Thanks for sharing uh, such wonderful ideas with all our listeners. Uh, many thanks for that. Also, thank you to the team at PAL Network. We have Aizel, Kipruto, Dion Oguna, as well as Paul Abok, who supported this interview and made it happen. Uh, thank you very much, Mama Zaida. And uh, uh, best wishes for the future. And we hope to see you again 
in the next round of interviews that happen next year <laughs> thank you so much thank you very very much i'm very humbled for this opportunity thank you mama zaida and thank you to all the listeners who have heard us so patiently if you have questions please use the uh, youtube box uh, and comment section to share your questions we will try to answer your questions on the comment section itself if not it will add to the repository of interesting queries that are coming from our audience i am rajesh singh as part of pal network thank you very much and thank you mama zaida once again take care and goodbye